and welcome. <laughs> I think I've got to get, still get this thing corrected. Um, I want to say welcome and good day, not good morning. It's well in the afternoon. I hope that you are doing well on this um, beautiful, sunny Sunday. I hope that you are not uh, bogged down uh, by the pressures of this year. Uh, I hope that you are receiving just a little bit of rest therefrom on this colloquial day of rest uh, and that you are disconnected and detached from not, not reality, but from the pressures of the world. And if you're joining me today, I hope uh, that I can um, further uh, offer some understanding of the intricacies and complexities of the case uh, surrounding Brianna Taylor, Jamarcus Glover, and Kenneth Walker. Um, in this particular discussion, I'm not going to cover Mattenly, Officer Mattenly, and his allegations uh, and his countersuit. Uh, I will discuss that in next week's uh, live session. And then thereafter, we will spend the last two weeks, the last two sessions of this year, uh, discussing how to bring about a more perfect union. You know, we've had a lot of discussion about this more perfect union, you know, the, the, the words that are in the constitutional text, right, or the text of the Constitution. And um, there's been a lot of discussion, including uh, matters like the Black contract with America um, that has been spearheaded by Ice Cube and his team, or um, or more specifically, as he will um, state and has stated uh, that uh, he, a, use, he's willing to use his celebrity um, and his personal disposition uh, to, to back, you know, his personal reputation, um, which is uh, different from his celebrity status, even though he's one of those wonderful celebrities that uh, we don't really ever, you know, Black America doesn't really ever have to worry about Ice Cube being a sellout. So I'm not really sure where that came from in the first place. Um, I know that I first, when I saw it, I was like, no, not Ice Cube. Um, and I didn't say it in a manner like thinking that he would sell out. I was like, oh, that's strange. Let me look into this because there's got to be more to this story. Somebody has, has made a false reporting or misconstrued the facts because something's not quite right. Um, we also know uh, Queen Latifah to be one of these individuals. There's a long laundry list of these individuals that I could um, uh, that I could share in this feed. But we're going to go ahead and cover the four matters um, that I've listed. Uh, we're going to start with uh, Kenneth Walker and the attempted the ridiculous. The absolutely absurd charges of or charge of attempted murder um, that has been brought against Kenneth Walker. Uh, I'm using three different devices right now. And what I'm doing is I'm fact checking myself because I don't want to give disinformation. I don't even want to give the appearance thereof and you know that and you, you all know that about me um and this matter is so uh like i said there's so many intricacies uh as far as legal doctrine uh not as it relates to attempted murder though we're that one that's why i'm covering it first because it, it in my strong opinion am i a criminal lawyer no am i a current licensed attorney no am i apt in law Yes, even licensed attorneys and judges are fully aware of that. Um, uh, do I have any Juris Doctor academia? Yes. Um, 
Do I have experience in uh, litigating cases? Uh, yes. Do I have experience litigating uh, civil cases? Yes. Do I have experience litigating them successfully? Hell yes. I did so consistently until 2013. You all heard the story. In 2000, 2013, excuse me, when I began running, running, <laughs> When I began running for office in 2013, there was a swift and a very hard left turn uh, that, the, that the judicial districts or divisions, uh, 26, and I believe Guilford County, don't give me the line, I want to say it, they're 18. Um, so Mecklenburg County, Guilford County, Rowan County, and Cabarrus County. Um, and they're all relevant as it relates to uh, the matters that I discussed when I first ran for office. And that was clearing up this ill-gotten uh, felonious conviction against me. And with me having earned the title in Greensboro and the surrounding triad, um, and in Louisville and Cincinnati, that kind of, that um, triangle, um, it's a triad of sorts in that area as well. Indianapolis, Louisville, um, and Cincinnati are considered to be part of that. Um, and out in California, I had established a well-deserved uh, uh, reputation for efficacy. And so I was deemed queen get her done. Why is that relevant? Um, because when I ran for office, um, I did because you're permitted to use your quote unquote nickname or your AKA uh, when running for office. And it really got under their skin that, uh, that I would be designated on any ballot or uh, there would be any uh, promulgating that I was the queen getter done and that I was a very apt pro se litigant and, and you can see immediately how that would turn very badly uh, for someone like myself, okay? Um, so before 2013, I was well-respected um, in the courts. Um, I've had my business for quite some time, and most of the actions that I filed were on that specific basis. Uh, the lies that you've heard, have I uh, filed, uh, what is it, 162 cases in 70... 164 cases in 72 counties of North Carolina. As I understand it, there's only 100, well, when I say a home only, you'll get what I mean. There are 100 counties in North Carolina. <laughs> um, I've lived in, I guess, technically three, so four or five, um, Guilford, and of course, Mecklenburg. Um, some of these counties I've never even traveled through. Uh, so the notion is so absurd, much like this charge of attempted murder against uh, Kenneth Walker. Um, so uh, the point I'm making here is, uh, oh, and do, do I have any aptitude? Do I have any experience with litigating uh, a criminal action? Yes. Uh, I litigated my own um, criminal cases uh, from which the felonious convictions, you know, uh, is relevant. Um, and it's, it's equally relevant to this case, as, I, as I've mentioned to you. So this is not off topic in any way, shape or form. And I'm very, 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 very uh, acclimated, <laughs> very familiar uh, with Louisville co corruption, very familiar with it. Uh, I resided there. Um, we had our restaurant there, Flavors Restaurant and Lounge on 16th and Broadway. Um, it is part of the sector of uh, commercial property that is being, uh, we'll, we'll call it what it is, that is being colonized um, by uh, Caucasian male settlers uh, coming in using uh, tax lien certificates to, uh, you know, um, assume and acquire uh, these properties upon the death of the original owners and the um, those who are inheriting these uh, these buildings. The the children, the sons are uh, 
uh, not apt to defend themselves against uh, these uh, text lanes, and 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 it must there must be some additional corruption and coercion and threat uh, to them, and I mean like physical harm. The reason why I'm saying that is because there are apt African American uh, licensed attorneys in uh, in Louisville, and there are beautifully apt. Uh, African-American um, legal authorities, and there are Caucasian male and female uh, judges and attorneys who are there for the good fight. Um, but as you can see, um, with the Commonwealth of Kentucky and Louisville, this area is exceptionally divided racially. And I know this firsthand um, from having a business there and living there for uh, two years straight and then over the course of an additional um, year as I um, kind of was by uh, residential in both Cincinnati, um, well actually try, um, uh, Cincinnati, Louisville and Greensboro, North Carolina as I was expanding um, the modeling uh, agency uh, subsidiary of my corporation. Um, so, I've given, it's a long introduction and it's befittingly so, but let's go ahead and let's do our affirmation and then let's, let's go ahead and start the discussion with Kenneth Walker and the charge against him. And I'm, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fact check while I'm, while I'm online with you now, because I wanna make sure or that there haven't been any additional charges brought against him because it's possible. Um, and remember, I am not gonna be the type of person to claim that I know everything. And if ever you hear me come on any live forum and it, the words come out of my mouth, I know everything, that is a clone. And I want you to kill it <laughs> and then come find me, please. Cause evidently I've been kidnapped and I'm in the room somewhere uh, with my mouth uh, <laughs> muffled, who knows? But the point I'm making is that ain't me because I'm not going to ever in my right mind, otherwise I'm drugged, right? So it's it's me and don't kill me if I'm drugged, just help me get like kid, like kid, like rescue me. <laughs> so let's, let's go back, caveat. If you hear, if you see me and I say, I know everything, <laughs> I want you to rescue me and then take me somewhere and help me recover <laughs> from whatever drug they have forced into my system. Um, and if we find that, if you discover that that's not me, then of course that's a clone, then please help find me because I have been kidnapped and you know that that's the only two logical um, explanations for uh, you ever hearing me purport. <laughs> that I know everything because I don't. And especially as we are learning more and more uh, about this particular case and more and more information is being disclosed publicly um, and more, uh, how should I say it? It's not so much as more people are coming forward uh, but there's, there, like I told you before, it's much like an onion. It's very layered in the fact that, you know, like Madden Lee is, you know, making the claims that he's making. Um, it, it's just very interesting, the development of this case, we'll call it, okay? So, affirmation. May I further enlarge uh, our thought and our understanding and uh, not further divide. All right. Namaste, right? Okay. All right. Well wishes. If you're not a proponent for yoga, I'm not intending to incorporate any religion when I say that. So um, peace be unto you. Okay. So attempted murder. All right. Um, oh, and before I begin, so let me give this, we're going to give two disclaimers. Because the first one is going to be, well, someone's going to say, well, you were actually convicted. So that means that you weren't a good litigant for uh, the felonious uh, case uh, that you litigated yourself, right? 
Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I was. Um, I was facing, I want to say, 35 charges. Um, and ironically enough, if you look at the case file, uh, the 35 charges are all the same um, or on the same on the they're based on the same evidence that well, the same lack thereof. But, you know, that's an, we're not going to argue the case. So what I'm saying, they're based on the same evidence um, and the same the same circumstances, circumstances and the same. It was, you know, uh, all times material there, too. Like it's it's it was that just, you know, OK. <laughs> Um, and so there were 35, in their opinion, valid charges on that. OK, um, what I was convicted of was three charges. So I had litigated my case successfully, even so much so that the D.A. Uh, made a open court motion to dismiss uh, the state's case against me for a lack of sufficient evidence. Right. <laughs> But this angered the judge, and then we know the story. Okay, all right. So then the other disclaimer is, again, I am not a licensed attorney. I do not possess a Juris Doctor degree. I am not at this juncture in my academia considered an expert of law. So please consult an attorney if you are intending to use any of this information, um, or rather, let me switch that that sentence or structure around. If you are watching this and you think that you can use this information finitely to uh, litigate your own case or to share with someone else who is another defendant who is facing similar charges or the exact same charge, I strongly recommend that you seek uh, trusted, non-corrupt, completely highly ethical licensed attorneys to litigate your, uh, your defense, okay? All right, so here we go. All right, Kenneth Walker. All right, so we're gonna check first right now we all know that he has been charged with attempted uh, murder. Also, let me tell you this, because this is important. I really, really need you all to help me uh, gain the following that is required to be able to go live on YouTube. Um, yes, am I interested in being able to monetize? Absolutely. But more specifically, there's only specific formats that I can use and go live um, without that particular number of followers, okay? And so when I go live on Facebook, I can't, uh, I can't show you a picture in a picture. Um, I have downloaded some UCAM 9 software, um, but I don't really like, it, it seems like it's more of a kind of entertainment-based, um, uh, video editing uh, software, and and this is a more serious, you know, and more professional environment. Will we have lightheartedness? Absolutely, but I don't want emojis jumping across the screen and 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 have you know different filters with you know warping my face and stuff like that. That's not going to work. Um, if you have any suggestions, I'm looking into different options. That would be great. And the ultimate goal, however, the best case scenario is to be able to get to that number requirement, which is 100 subscribers. I've got more than 100 followers and 100 uh, of you that have liked this page. If you all just go over and subscribe to the YouTube channel, then we can do some really, really cool um, uh, live sessions where I can actually play the video that I wanted to play today, but I don't have a way to do so. I have provided that link uh, in a post previous to this one, kind of saying, hey, this is what we're talking about. Come join us. Um, and it was posted on ABC News, uh, uh, their website. Um, and it's a very interesting video because it is uh, video feed footage that has been released from the um, the happenings 
immediately after Brianna was killed, after they, uh, you know, purportedly executed the warrant, the no knock warrant, right? And you see this this footage is from the point where uh, Kenneth Walker is seen walking backwards, um, following the directions of the police officers. Um, and like I said, we'll get into that right after we discuss the elements to attempted murder. Remember the if then scenarios that I told you um, are how the legal field, the legal professional field, the court of law, statutory law is set up to say, will this charge stand? Uh, should we convict? If this is the, if the A, then and B and C, then convict. Okay. In this particular case, there are three elements. So this is a good, you know, like a good um, typifying of what exactly would be the if then scenario. Um, I really, really want to show this video. I can't, not while I'm live on Facebook. I can do this on YouTube. Please help me get that uh, that status on YouTube, um, and and I guess I shouldn't call it status, but you know, uh, please help me get to 100 subscribers on YouTube so that we can go live on YouTube and then have all the interactive uh, media that I can uh, use to um, further enlarge. Excuse me, further enlarge. Uh, our discussions. Uh, and that way we can see everything in real time and you don't have to go to another post to kind of check on what I was saying. We can all see it in one post, all there conveniently, uh, one stop shop. Okay. All right. So the, the elements, uh, let's see here. Hold on. Okay. So this was, um, Let me look up any other charges on Kenneth Walker. And remember, so I've, like I said, I've got three devices up. So work with me here. All righty. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. So October 13th, um, it says, of course, the charges uh, were dropped. Um, now, what I'm looking at here, though, is November. Hold on. Yeah, because I'm looking at a November video, and it actually um, suggests um, the charges uh, are still uh, still being brought about. So let me just check one other. Give me one more moment, please. And see, this is what I mean. This kind of presents like a disconnect from us. And I don't want that because then we could, I could be pulling this up and you could actually be seeing, you know, this, this area over here could be dedicated to a block of, you know, additional uh, picture in picture footage uh, while I'm verifying this. And then you could see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I guess what they're doing, and and this is my biggest concern, because I'm going to talk about double jeopardy 
um, as well. Um, it's going to be a bit of, well, it's, it's going to be a bit of a, um, of a branch off from, you know, what we're discussing, but you'll understand how, because even though the charges have been dropped, um, and that's significant, that is very significant. Um, he still has to deal with the stigma that goes along with having ever been charged with attempted murder. And sometimes in America, that can be an equally damaging, uh, character damaging um, uh, designation, scarlet letter on a person's, you know, uh, livelihood, uh, if they're seeking employment, uh, as he moves forward and uh, begins to date again. Um, yeah, it's a lot. There's a lot to it. Okay. So let me just go back to this. I want to make sure. Uh, let's see. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. I'll be right back. Car. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yes. All right. So just making sure they haven't been the charges have not been raised again because when they're dismissed, um, they are generally dismissed without um, prejudice, especially in those type of situations. Um, where you're um, considering a case with such complexities um, and without prejudice would and does mean uh, that those charges can be brought about again. Um, similarly, in the civil court, say, for instance, um, you sue um, Walmart for negligence, right? And let's say that uh, for whatever reason, you decide to voluntarily dismiss your case against them. You no longer wish to move forward. That doesn't mean that you, that, that doesn't mean number one, that Walmart is innocent. That doesn't mean that you forgive Walmart. That means that, you know, oftentimes it means that there may be some flaws in your if then scenario, what I was telling you about the elements that must be met in order to constitute the actionability of a crime or a civil case, you know, or more so a crime because you see people file uh, civil cases all the time. And oftentimes the elements for that civil action have not been met um, uh, because the standard, even though the standard is the same, um, it is the person who can initiate the civil action and in the in the case of a crime, it must be the state that moves about moves about to bring those charges uh, forward against the defendant or suspects on behalf of the injured person, like the, you know the plaintiff or whatever. In this case, uh, they would be claiming that their own law officer, uh, Mattenly, who was shot in the thigh, would be the injured party. Um, and thereby the state would be bringing charges against Kenneth Walker um, on his behalf. Okay, so some of you weren't really sure why those charges were dropped specifically, okay? Um, now, there could be reasons, uh, yes, excuse me. There could be reasons rooted in... Uh, uh, corruption, but let me just tell you, just pretty straightly, that's why I was telling you in the beginning of this, um, the charges against Kenneth Walker were absurd. The, I, I, they were just absurd. Um, and as much as we would like to assign corruption with every corner of the courtroom or the courthouse, the truth of the matter is that not all licensed attorneys are corrupt and not all judges are corrupt. It's just unfortunate that we see the corruption so often, we begin to assign it to every licensed attorney and every judge on the bench. 
And we understand that because corruption has become so prevalent and so blatant and so unapologetic and so unceasing and so escalatingly just unethical and egregious that this is, you know, this is the result of that. Um, so you can't blame people for having those feelings because they're they're substantiated, you know? Um, but it's not a generalization, meaning that not every licensed attorney is going to be corrupt. Not every uh, judge is going to be corrupt. So just to clarify that, and then we can move forward. All right. Um, because remember, uh, even though there's no crime that has been committed, Mattingly uh, has moved for uh, a countersuit for his injuries. Right. OK, um, having been shot um, severely um, or shot in the thigh and sustaining um, uh, pretty serious injuries. OK, and I guess we will touch upon just a little bit of Mad Lee's injuries. Let's see. Let's see if they give any detail. On where exactly the bullet entered, exited, if it exited, and what exactly, what uh, injuries he sustained specifically, uh, what rehabilitation um, he is now experiencing and the like. Okay, so number one, inchoate crimes. So inchoate crimes are crimes that are, they're like attempt, well not like, um, they are attempt crimes, crimes that are, uh, they're considered criminal, uh, without the actual harm being fully carried out. Okay, so then that's why you have attempted murder, attempted conspiracy, right? Attempt. Attempt. Uh, yeah, it, it's just amazing. Okay, so the attempt in and of itself is going to be very difficult um, to prove um, as it relates to uh, Kenneth Walker. So she, I know that he is probably still impacted by all of this, but he should generally rest assured that these charges should not ever be brought up again, because quite factually, based on everything that we see, the evidence that has been um, disclosed thus far, there's just no chance in heaven or hell that the state can prove that Kenneth Walker had specific intent to commit uh, the actual charge alleged. So that's that's the number one element for uh, the inchoate crime of attempted murder. The second element is that, all right, uh, in this attempt, uh, there must have been, you know, uh, the steps carried out for it, right? So, uh, and then secondly, um, if, I'm sorry, thirdly, if then the attempt had been uh, successful, that it would have resulted in the crime that the law seeks to prevent. Okay, so basically, this is what we're saying. Uh, we'll do it one more time, and we'll. So you got the. You have to have the the mens rea, which is the intent, the malicious intent to commit the crime. Okay. The actus reus, and you can think about that men's mental and then the actus, what steps did they take? What actions did they undertake, right? So then um, did they take a substantial step toward completing the crime? And then uh, was there a failure to complete the crime? And that would make an attempt because if they actually completed the crime, then that would no longer be attempt. That would be the charge of the actual crime, right? Okay, so... We have to begin with the mens rea. So, because the most important of these elements, because you know what's um, it's predicated on this mens rea intent. So, if there's no mens rea intent, <laughs> uh, it's just the whole case is just a, a bunch of hot air. Because what I mean, what you gonna like if they didn't if they didn't have the specific intent, then everything else that they did was driven by something else other than this criminal intent. So then therefore it's not a crime. So we're done, like, <laughs> we're, we're done, right? Okay, and um, 
uh, that's what we have here in the case of Kenneth Walker. Um, you see this even more so in this video. Please do go and take a look at that video. Again, my professional apologies. I really wish that I could incorporate it in this feed right here above my hand. But I cannot until you help me please get to 100 subscribers on YouTube. Uh, in this video, you will first see that Kenneth Walker is following the directions of the officers. Um, you will see what we complain about all the time about the officer's disposition uh, for whatever reason. And I, I can understand when you are like in a, a fight in your conflict with someone, right? And there's a heated argument and you might be sharing some profanity and, you know, you're trying to, you know, uh, you're, you're talking that ish, quote unquote, to each other. But I have not ever been able to understand that type of antagonistic disposition used during an arrest or diffusing a situation. I just, I, I just never got it. I'm, I, I, because these are professional officers of the law. Uh, they're not there in the capacity as mafia god. Uh, um, uh, you know, the not what is it, the hitmen or uh contracted assassinators or you know the the goon squad of the mafia, they're they're there in an official capacity as professional officers of the law, professionally sworn officers of law, um, who should be able to restrain from uh unnecessary profanity and antagonism that in my strong opinion is only going to cause the suspect to be even more intentional, excuse me, um, uh, emotionally distressed. Um, and I believe that that emotional distress is what uh, escalates uh, on both sides um, because the energy is just icky and it just it just continues to escalate and it's just a negative bomb waiting to explode. And then you have one side that is believing uh, that they are purporting that they fear for their life. And you have another, you have the suspect on the other side or suspects on the other side, and they are equally fearing for their life because they're confused. Okay, like this is this is a officer of law, but he's speaking to me like he is a mafia mob boss from one of the movies. So I know when I watch these films, that stuff is scary. And so I'm scared for my life. Should I follow his instructions or is he just a, yet another corrupt police officer? And should I just try to, which is better? Should I run and try to, you know, uh, get away? Because the flight, that flight reaction is a natural human behave, behavior. Um, you can look that up in psychological journals. Um, or psychology-based journals. Um, and so in this case, as he's walking back, you hear him exclaiming, I don't even know what's going on. He even says, we're general workers. Like, uh, please, I don't get this. Um, you know, my my girlfriend, she's in there. You know, like, it's it's very, very piercing emotionally as you listen to the words and you hear him saying very clearly in the beginning, I'm going to follow your directions basically because I'm scared out of my mind right now. I don't even know what's going on. I'm so scared. He repeats how scared he is and you know what the response is from the police officer as he is following their directions. You better keep back. You better keep your head this way. You better turn and you better come out and keep your, uh, your basically turn uh, the direction that you are. Otherwise, I'm going to unleash these dogs on you. Like, yeah. But how is that necessary? He has his hands up. It's very clear in the video. He clearly is not posing a threat at this moment. As we've already discussed, he didn't, he didn't pose a threat, not a threat as we 
uh, as we would assign a definition from the scope of law or criminal law to uh, his conduct within the home as they were executing the warrant, because remember, it was a no-knock warrant. They had no expectation that officers were going to uh, force their way in unannounced and begin shooting. He thought that he was protecting himself and his girlfriend. And in every other sector, in every other circumstance, generally, he would be uh, consi uh, considered a hero. So he was not, <laughs> he didn't have the mens rea to commit any criminal intent, uh, any, crim any crime. Um, <laughs> Lord have mercy, it's so absurd. Uh, and I'm not laughing. You understand the, the basis for my laughter. I know you do. Because it's just so absurd. Um, so he's, he's walking backwards and the officers are continuing to spew diarrhea at him, verbal diarrhea, to make him feel like he's in the middle of some, you know, mob movie and they'll, you know, decapitate him and, and shoot him in the back and, and knock him the F out and unleash the dogs on him and ah, like, like all, how is that all necessary in professionalism? Uh, we wouldn't have any expectation of our judges and we've seen some of our, our judges act in the same manner in the courtroom. They may not come out and use profanity per se, and I'm pretty sure some of you, I'm pretty sure there are circumstances where profanity has been using, has been used, excuse me. Please inform me. I've not seen it where profanity has been used, but I've seen where there has been a, a gross abuse of judicial authority in the courtroom. I've seen it with my own two eyes, I, and it wasn't even my case. I'm just, you know, I was just happened to be there for my, you know, my case, and it, it was not necessarily anything major that I was in court for. It could have been just like a car accident, and I'm there, you know, litigating, um, getting the payment for uh, the repairs on my vehicle, or there in court, uh, awaiting uh, to just tell the magistrate that um, I already have the payment for the rent, and I'm submitting it, blah, 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 you know, just simple stuff. And, uh, uh I've seen, oof, I've seen some really deplorable behavior. Very deplorable. They continue not only to yell at him, um, and unfortunately, as we have grown to expect as Black Americans and our um, allies from other ethnic groups, uh, we have become numb in some regards, not numb to the to the effect that we're not going to fight for justice, just numb to the express fact that like, like, we're not surprised. I'm not surprised to see that now that they're releasing all the footage that this is what has occurred. I'm not surprised. This is how America feels like we're like, oh, okay, we're not surprised. We're not surprised at this. We're not surprised at all. Um, and they are uh, using excessive force, pulling him around unnecessarily. He is already in their custody. It is very clear that he is not uh, resisting arrest in any way, shape, or form. It is very clear because he keeps uh, saying that he is just confused. He doesn't know what's going on, that they are just regular workers. He uses that term. We are just regular workers. What in the world is going on here? Like, why do you think like what <laughs> what is going on oh boy they kick his legs out you know as we have begun to see that that is also common with some of the antagonistic um ant excuse me antagonistically inclined officers um they already have someone in custody and the suspect or the det detainee is cooperating and yet instead of just just go ahead and put them in the handcuffs because they're just like, they're not resisting arrest and you've got them, they're leaning against your car. And instead of just, okay, just put the handcuffs on them, you're done, boom, all done. 
then they're kicking their legs out to spread their life, excuse me, legs wide. Um, it's just unnecessary. That is unquestionably egregious. It is unquestionably unprofessional. It is an unquestionably um, uh, unlawful, assertedly unlawful uh, act of excessive force and antagonism against detainees, especially when uh, the irony is that the officer is not a judicial authority. Uh, their scope of authority ends with the arrest. Uh, and you'll understand what I mean when I make this next sentence. So they, that arrest by no means is to serve as the full uh, process of due process. Uh, the trial, the uh, arraignment, the uh, uh, pre-trial matters, none of which usually the police officer uh, is involved nor has any litigative authority. Um, and it is, it is very likely that the outcome can be complete innocence or exoneration for the suspect altogether or, uh, you know, find some wrongdoing on the part of the officer where the evidence is uh, inadmissible. Just a number of things that can occur during this pretrial process and even the trial process, you know, discovery and all. Um, so basically, there, there, at, there's absolutely no need for this antagonism is what I'm getting at. No need whatsoever, because it's not a final decision. The arrest is not at all a final decision on the matter at all. So it's almost like they're doing it in an attempt to just break down the suspect in hopes that they will just admit to a crime or succumb or be so fearful. And we know this to be the story of many black male Americans who just felt like they were under so much coercion or threat or intimidation during the interrogation, albeit custodial um, interrogation or during the, uh, the incident to arrest. And they feel very strongly that they can see the light at the end of the tunnel and that they're gonna be found guilty anyway. And that is a thought pattern that I want to have eradicated from beautiful black men's minds if they are ever arrested, because it is not a final decision at all, at all. And that act of uh, intimidating uh, the suspect and uh, um, effectually coercing them into some type of confession, uh, it actually is unlawful. Um, it can render that uh, any information obtained during that interrog interrogation um, inadmissible, right? Okay. So, and we started at, because we're, we're, I don't know how we're at an hour, because, oh, I see. Okay, never mind. So we've got about, uh, I see here, uh, 10 more minutes. And I told you that we were going to, there was going to be one more uh uh, video on this topic. Um, and I don't ever want to, even where I may, uh, elaborate further on our subtopics, I'm not going to limit myself, excuse me, in that regard, because these are matters that we really need to discuss. And it is my hope in pursuing the field of law pursuing competency in the field of law, that we can have an appreciation and an increased uh, dedication to the legal education of us all, all American citizens. Um, because I don't believe that it is fair that an American citizen is held liable for the stipulations of law um, and violations of that law if they don't have a full understanding of that law. And I don't believe uh, that, that a licensed attorney should be the only means of, uh, of relief um, 
or understanding of the law uh, where a defendant find them, finds himself in a legal situation, um, of course, for which they must defend themselves. Um, I, I see very clearly the, the need and the application of a licensed attorney. Please do not mistake my words, but that should not be uh, the first um, and only resort for uh, the defendant. Many of these cases, traffic cases even that we've seen can no longer be successfully uh, litigated by a pro se defendant uh, without going into the court and being mocked in what is otherwise a very basely handled, uh, near, near completely administratively handled matter. And instead they go in and they represent themselves and anyone who would seek to represent themselves is then, as you can see, the, the attitude of the court changes um, and the, uh, the presiding judge, even the bailiffs, you can see the disposition of even the clerks change against that person, male or female. I've seen it in cases of um, clearly uh, disenfranchised, maybe lower income white males and white, especially more often white women um, and black men and women. And you can see immediately that they just, the court is just disgusted. They have this unfounded disdain against individuals who come in and uh, are willing to represent themselves. Um, they may be doing it for financial reasons. They may be doing it thinking, okay, well, it's just a speeding ticket. Like it shouldn't be that much. Like, why would I need a lawyer for this? Like I should, I want to just talk to the judge and just say like, my bad, or or I actually wasn't speeding and please hear me. And then too often the uh, the statements of that defendant are trivialized in comparison to the statements made by their own sworn officers. And in one regard, we understand, but the, the truth of the matter holds that that officer is also human and that it is that defendant's right to due process to question. I mean, after all, they made up the rules. You know, they made up the rules. So why are you not playing by your own rules? Uh, because there is no law that suggests or mandates that um, a defendant must be represented by a licensed attorney. There is no law that disallows and absolutely prohibits a defendant from uh, pro se litigation, especially in very basal matters. Like, my gosh. Ugh. Um, but nonetheless, this is why uh, the charges were immediately dropped against uh, Kenneth Walker because they were bogus. They were just completely, uh, just resoundingly bogus. Um, it was resoundingly clear, clear that he had absolutely no mens rea. He had no criminal intent. Did he have an intent to protect uh, himself and his girlfriend? There's we 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 see that there's a greater likelihood, and of course that's the that's the more uh, valid analysis of this is that he intended to protect himself and his girlfriend. Some of uh, the commentary has been more on that he wanted to just protect himself, and of course there's been commentary that uh, one of his bullets, and I told you we'll go over the ballistics as well. Um, considering the fact that we're about 10 minutes out, um, it was necessary to go over these things. And I hope that I have, again, enlarged uh, your understanding and appreciation for the field of law, that you will take it a lot more seriously, legal education, because we've got a lot, a lot of work to do if we're going to have a more perfect union. And we'll discuss that in the last two weeks of this year um, and try to get on the same page in that regard. We'll also discuss as it relates to um, Black America specifically, uh, the revised uh, Black Code, um, and you've seen uh, some of my posts here in this last week, please understand that not every Black person is on code, not every Black woman. I know we've been talking about the, the recent election and the votes and how Black women have just shown up and shown out. 
<clears throat> out there for all my ladies. We ain't playing around. Uh, <laughs> we never have. We not ever have and not ever shall. Um, but there are unfortunately some of us black women who are still not on code. We need you, sis. Get on code, my love. We need you, sis. And these are trademark terms. Please uh, do not <laughs> infringe upon my intellectual property. They will be on shirts soon. Please do support me so that I can do more good in our hoods. Remember, your girl is originally from the hood, and I love my people. I love all my people, but I love my beautiful melanated people so much and i am dedicated to our evolution uh individually as a diasporan native african some of us don't know which country in africa from which we de uh, descend um and all of our allies, beautiful allies, and all the beautiful ethnic groups, my love is endless, and you know that, okay? So we've got this if-then scenario for this inchoate crime that was brought against um, Kenneth Walker, uh, dropped two months later, um, and then they released the footage. Like, really? Really? Um, and actually, let me look that up. Was he under bail? What was what? And I know some. I wish. I wish that you all would also please be interactive with me. I really. This is not a one woman show. Um, let me see. Yeah, he had been held on a uh, full cash bond. Um, now, some of you, let me discuss that too. I'll discuss that because I know that firsthand um, from having to deal with a full cash bond um, in Louisville. Um, now, in my case, um, the charges uh, were not murder. Um, and my full cash bond was $1,000, which I did pay and did receive back because I did appear in court. Um, and the charges for that uh, that action uh, were dismissed in my favor. Um, now, whether or not it's dismissed in your favor, uh, Commonwealth is um, both Virginia and Kentucky. Let me not speak out of turn. I'm pretty sure Virginia is the same way. I'm pretty sure that it's applicable to Commonwealth as well as other states. Um, but the Commonwealth of Kentucky, I know firsthand um, that their statutes allow for uh, full cash bonds. Um, here in North Carolina, let's say you have a $250, excuse me, $250,000 bond. Um, you know, here you can pay a, a small percentage of that um, to a bail bondsman um, and it can be held and then they can, you know, write a certificate, another, which is a bond, right? Um, and then that will suffice until you appear in court. And the, the exchange, this kind of transaction is that, of course, uh, if you fail to appear in court, then you forfeit the funds that you deposited in that security uh, for Commonwealth. You deposit all of those funds. So that 250000 he would have had to come up with that entire amount. Um, and just having to do that. Um, and I don't have a lot of experience with uh, litigating a false arrest action um, uh, civilly. Uh, I, I initiated my false arrest claim against Louisville, um, and that's when I was extradited uh, to North Carolina under uh, these, you know, knowingly falsified and trumped up charges in Cabarrus County. Um, I'm saying all of this so that you know that for the most part, I am telling you about my experiences, um, uh, firsthand knowledge, uh, which you can absolutely without fail trust. Um, so even where 
there would be a licensed attorney who may get a hold of this or you may share what you have seen in my video and refer to my name <laughs> um, to uh, one of these licensed attorneys who would then say something to the effect of she doesn't know she's not a licensed attorney and blah, 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 blah. Um, well, come on. We know that knowledge is not limited to attorneys just because they have a Juris Doctor. Come on. We know the same thing is not the case for uh, judges. Please stop believing that someone with academia necessarily is smarter or more knowledgeable uh, than you are on subject matter. You do your work, you divide and research, and even though you may not have the same academia and maybe the same night experience, do not second guess yourself still yet, okay? Um, it is your right, your privy, your entitlement even as an American citizen to have a full understanding of the statutes for which uh, or uh, by which uh, you are governed, okay? If, if you're being held accountable to, uh, to not violate them, you have full right of entitlement to, uh, to have full knowledge of them. And this is the reason why I take such great issue with uh, cases being brought against people who don't have a full understanding of the law, and especially where they may hire a licensed attorney who has assuredly taken the oath to be ethical um, and to not be corrupt. But clearly you see they have their own checks and balances because I keep telling you, as much as it sounds like a most evil statement and it just sounds like a very um, a pessimistic outlook, the truth of the matter is that people can murder. Murder is illegal, but people can murder. Stealing is illegal, but people can steal. Battery, robbery, uh, arson, mayhem, they're all illegal, but people can do it. Are there consequences for, you know, for their actions? Yes, there are consequences. Are the consequences always going to be assigned? No. Unfortunately, we've seen where bad guys do get off, quote unquote. Thankfully, in this situation, a good guy got off, quote unquote. And that's what matters the most. What is the most unfortunate part of this is that Breonna Taylor did not get that opportunity. Her life. Her life was the consequence a failed administrative procedure by Louisville police officers and detectives, judicial fiduciaries who failed in due diligence to verify the whereabouts and proper address of, what is his name? Jamarcus Glover. Death is not supposed to be, nor is it a claim, or excuse me, nor is it a consequence, a punitive consequence in our legal system for suspicion of drug trafficking or drug possession. But Birana effectually was tried in that home on the spot and her life was taken. There is absolutely no excuse for their conduct. I'm actually glad that I did kind of go over just a bit and elaborate even further into this. Sometimes you see the articles and they don't go into detail about the things uh, that some of you still have questions about. and. So you may wonder, oh, well, they dropped it just because they knew they were wrong. You know, well, I want you to know the exact why. Um, in this particular case, there was legal substantiation for dropping the charges. So that wouldn't necessarily just be like they just dropped the charges because they knew they shouldn't have killed Brianna. Like we, we want to assign that as the reason because it makes us feel better about having lost another beautiful black life. But in all reality, they now, and, and, with, and, and I, 
I will admit this, it does happen to individuals where all the elements are not met and they find themselves still facing those charges. So because his case was high profile and beautiful black people were out there protesting, you can uh, be proud of yourselves. We can all be proud of ourselves in keeping this matter publicly um, on the minds and forefront of uh, uh, the American legal system. And we did have a hand in some regard um, for uh, this case to not be tried in secret. Imagine how many cases like this have been tried in secret. And when I say in secret, I don't mean in the back alley somewhere. Uh, oftentimes, uh, cases are tried in a court of law where the defendant is there, there is no audience. They've, they've done that more escalatedly than you can ever know. The judges and uh, licensed attorneys, the DAs, and they hold this, this trial basically with no audience. And I think that should be illegal as well. I think that we need to go to complete jury trials at this point because it has, when there is no jury trial and there's only a bench trial where the judge and most of you know what a bench trial is. That is just when the judge decides uh, your case, as opposed to the jury, you having a hand in selecting the jury. And the jury um, uh, uh, having uh, a part in that decision making process. And you're hoping because the whole point is to have that jury include your peers. And so that way you would have uh, more of a stronghold to a fair, impartial trial. I believe and I assert very directly and pointingly that when there is no jury trial, they, meaning the judicial uh, official who is presiding, the DA, they can just run the course of their injustice in that courtroom freely in secret. You get what I'm saying? Um, so we're going to stop there. And I've already listed the things that we're going to go over. So we'll go over the other three. We've already touched upon Louisville corruption a bit. We have now it's completely clarified. Um, uh, you don't have to ask what what was the cause. It was a little bit, it was probably about 75%. No, let me say it this way. It was, it was more likely 50% that we made sure that it was completely publicized and that this was not going to be tried in secret. And then 50%, which actually should have been the 100% of why the charges were dropped. But I don't think that that's the case. And you probably agree with me. And then the other 50% was the express fact that all elements were not met for this to constitute an actionable crime. All right, people. So again, I hope that I have enlarged uh, our thought and our understanding of the concepts and the matters that we discuss. And I hope that I have not further divided. It is my greatest intention that we all evolve past all of this nonsense. We can do it. I believe that the stars are aligned for that. Uh, I believe that 2020, albeit very, very frustrating and very, very uh, full of catastrophes. It is a number uh, in numerology that represents rebirth. And I hope that you embrace that aspect more so than any of the negative and that you find positive in all, in spite of all the negative that we've experienced this year. My love, is endless for you and love is not weak. It is strong. It can be warrior-like and mine is for you and our livelihood and quality of life, pursuit of happiness, life and liberty into perpetuity. I am Tigress Sydney Acute McDaniel and this was Evolve Weekly. Have a wonderful week.